Poco just announced its new flagship, the Poco F5 Pro. Now, this is an interesting phone. And from what I can see here, Poco does want to move up to the premium tier and it does have a few specialties on this phone as well. But that will also affect its price. So, is it worth the price tag of 2,099 ringgit Malaysia? This is the question that we are answering today. I have to be honest with you guys first, I didn't get to spend much time with this phone because we only had it for about 9 days I think and we have to return it tomorrow so I might miss out a few details here and there. So starting off with the design, I think it's just a bit polarizing honestly. The carbon fiber weave texture is on both the left and right sides and uh, some may like it but it's not for me. I really don't care about this at all so I'm just gonna slap a case on it. And they have also included a transparent case inside the box. You see, the included case is actually good in some ways because the camera bump is raised on, I don't know, it kind of creates a trapezoid shape and I was worried about scratching the camera easily because it is raised up. But that included TPU case actually has a bit of a extension to wrap around the trapezoid shape as well. So yeah, you are protected in that regard. So if you're finding an aftermarket case, then it is recommended to get one with the same design as the included case. Speaking of the cameras, are they good? Well, this is something that I don't have much time to test with and it has a total of three different cameras here and only two of them are usable because the two megapixel macro camera is, uh, I don't know why Poco decided to downgrade from the Poco F2 Pro and F3's excellent five megapixel autofocusing macro camera to the two megapixel fixed focus one. It, that was disappointing to me. Overall, the main camera can take some fine looking pictures, I guess. I mean, here are some hastily taken photos just for you to see. The main camera does have OIS, which is good. One thing I can assure you though, is that the ultra wide angle camera is a bit underwhelming, I would say. That 8 megapixel sensor can't really do much. And I guess it is the same sensor as other phones that we have reviewed recently. You can watch those at the top right corner there if you want to know more. For the video side of things, you can record up to 8K 24fps or 4K 60fps and from what I've seen here, the 4K 60fps recording seems to have been combined with EIS and that means the stabilization won't be that good. And then there's also no way to disable EIS, so if you're using this phone with a gimbal, then it will introduce a lot of artifacts due to overcompensation. Okay, moving on to the screen, this is one of the biggest highlights of the Poco F5 Pro. Rightly so, actually, because it is using a 6.67 inch AMOLED screen with a high resolution of 3200 by 1440 pixels and a maximum refresh rate of 120Hz. While the specs do look great, you have to head into the settings menu and change the resolution and refresh rate yourself because out of the box, it defaults to 1080p 60Hz only. I have no idea why they are doing this, but I have mentioned this before in other reviews previously as well because this is not the first time we've encountered this. As for the brightness, you can go up to 1000 nits in high brightness mode which is to say under direct bright sunlight, you'll be perfectly fine, no problems there. And the color accuracy though is actually good, it covers 98.38% of sRGB. While it is not the best, I can say that yeah, you can't really discern that 1.62% difference. The Delta E number is also very low. So that's actually very good. What I don't like about this screen though is actually the placement of the under display fingerprint scanner. It's way too low and it's just not ergonomic to use. I still think that under display fingerprint scanners are inferior and that is not a hot take. Since this is the highest end Poco phone available to date, it also comes with a very powerful chipset. For the F5 Pro, they chose to go with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 which is about 9 years old at this point in time, since its first debut, I think. Anyway, even though the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is considered old at this point, it still has a lot of performance packed into it. As shown in our gaming test, I played Genshin Impact, highest graphical settings at 60fps, and while it did not maintain 60fps all of the time, especially in the new desert area, it still manages to hover somewhere around 50fps, which is fantastic. What I'm impressed by is the temperature. The Poco F5 Pro manages to maintain somewhere around 41 degrees Celsius after playing for about half an hour and I'm truly impressed by it actually. 
And if you're worried about the read and write speed of the RAM and storage, then don't be because it's actually very good as well. So all in all, the phone is just great for gaming and you can't go wrong with it. What I'm perplexed by is the battery life. The POCO F5 Pro does come with a slightly larger than usual 5160mAh battery and using our standardized battery life test, we got somewhere slightly less than 12 hours and it is still good but I do expect more battery life out of this bigger battery. The phone also comes with a 67 watt charger inside the box. It can charge from 15% to completion in about 50 minutes. Uh, I think that is to be expected actually. The temperature is also directly resulted by the charging speed and as you can see from this graph here, it never reaches 42.5 degrees Celsius throughout the entire charging cycle and that is very safe. What's weird though is the inclusion of wireless charging. Yes, I truly did not expect this feature to be on the POCO F5 Pro but here it is. And if you want then you can actually utilize MagSafe as well. Just get a ring like what I did on my other phone and then slap it on the phone. Then you can start to use MagSafe. Now for the software, I want to skip this because it is using MIUI and I don't want to repeat myself. Just watch our video at the top right corner there for more information. What I have to add though is this, because of the higher resolution of 3440 by 1440 pixels, we expect the UI elements to scale accordingly but what's happening on the phone though is very weird. For example, the power menu buttons, they are smaller now if you're using the higher resolution. So yeah, that seems to be a bug but it's a small case overall. And then a few more things to mention. The POCO F5 Pro still uses a USB 2.0 port at the bottom, so no HDMI output over USB-C. And surprisingly, there's no audio jack as well, so if you're going to use this phone with your wireless earbuds and whatnot, then you have to suffer through audio delay. Maybe we should do a video explaining about Bluetooth audio delay once and for all, so let us know down below if you're interested to see it. There's also no micro SD card slot, but we do have a IR blaster at the top. With everything said, is the POCO F5 Pro worth the price? That depends entirely up to you. The Malaysian configurations available are as shown on the screen here and we have the 12GB RAM with 256 storage version. Honestly, I think the 12GB plus 256GB version is just the worst out of the three available, I would say. Remember, in our previous video, we did show you that 8GB of RAM is probably enough for years to come actually and it's your RAM speed that matters not the RAM amount. Watch that video at the top right corner there to know more about it. Since this phone doesn't have any expandable storage, I recommend you to get either the 8 plus 256 version or the 12 plus 512 gigs version. And as an alternative to this phone, you can also look for the Xiaomi 12T Pro because that too is a fantastic phone and comes with the same Snapdragon 8 plus Gen 1 faster charging speed but at a higher price and also assuming that you can still find leftover stocks in the market. So that's all that we have to share with you about the POCO F5 Pro. Overall, if you're buying this phone just for gaming, go for it.